What's up all you collectors out there? Fat Samurai Guy here with Lady Fat Blood and welcome to another episode of Fat Pickups. Today we got some Blu-rays and some action figures to show you, so let's do this. Go! Duh! Yeah, cause uh, you know, we, we enjoyed this so much the first time we saw it in a theater. <laughs> oh, it comes with masks. Oh, yes. goody. It's the only reason I bought it. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows. How, how much did you pay for this? It, it was cheap. Couldn't have been cheap enough. It uh, was really cheap. I don't know, maybe some liquor in us and we'll uh, enjoy it a little bit better. <laughs> I, speaking of shit, <laughs> yeah. these are two really bad, horrible movies. <laughs> They're they're both they're they're shit. Both of them are bad. Okay, <laughs> but I got them for cheap as fuck prices. <laughs> Not just cheap, cheap as fuck prices. There's a difference. Yes, and we got gamer <laughs> Gerard Butler. Yes, gamer. Yes, and oh my god, <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe I bought this. Nah. <sighs> Texas Chainsaw 3D, <laughs> which was pretty much critically panned by fans and everyone, and uh, me and my buddy, uh, little Chris, was sitting down, we were just like expecting the worst movie ever. Now when we watched it, we were like, oh man, this is bad. But we were expecting dog shit, and we <laughs> ended up liking it for some reason. And most of it because it was so ridiculous. I mean, come on, Leatherface as the hero, as a heroic character, really? So we were just, we were laughing our asses off. So it gave us some kind of entertainment, so. There you go. Ooh, more shit. Ooh, we got the Resident Evil collection. Ooh, <laughs> smell that shit. <laughs> and uh, again, for cheap. For for dirt, dirt ass cheap. Uh, I think we marathoned this bitch before uh, before we went to see the yeah. the work of art. <laughs> That was the sixth installment. Yeah. I still like three, and out of the yeah. box set, out of five films, three was defective. Of yeah. course it fucking yeah, was. Yeah, figures. So you had to get a replacement on that, but yeah. uh, hey, if you're gonna get it, get it cheap. Yeah. All right, so all of you out there that enjoyed our American Ninja films uh, review and uh, enjoyed us watching those movies and our reaction, <laughs> which we had a lot of fun making. Yeah. Finally picked this bad boy up. I can't wait to watch it. Oh. Probably gonna film ourselves watching it for you guys. Oh, <laughs> but we have picked up Michael Dudikoff's Avenging Force, yes. That also stars our boy, Steve James. That's right, the man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> so it has to be good. Yeah, so this is like an American Ninja reunion in here. Directed by Sam Furstenberg, right? Who directed the American Ninja films, well, released the first, the, the first two. Yeah. Yeah. So we gotta watch this. This is gonna be fun. We'll do a review on this for you guys. Yeah. Ooh, we have an adventures in blind buying, perhaps in our future. Uh, Stakeland Two. I don't know. We'll see about that. I really enjoyed the first movie. Um, really good vampire flick. Yeah, Nick Dimitri was fantastic in that movie. He's in this in the first movie. He's um he's done kind of like a trilogy of horror in his mm -hmm. own way. He's done kind of like this modified, odd, uh, uh, what, what was it, Mulberry Street, where they were kind of like zombies, mm -hmm. and then these is vampires, and then he was in um, late phases. Late phases, which is a really really underrated, probably little well, well little known. Um, a werewolf film, but we'll see about Stakeland too. Different director, probably, yeah. probably low expectations. So hopefully, yeah. you know, fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, it's entertaining enough. Next up was a movie I've always been curious about. I used to see my dad um, watch it, and I was just like, "This looks boring as fuck." <laughs> and I was like, "I'm going in the other room, mm -hmm. okay? I'm playing Miss Pac-Man in the other room, Dad. You can go ahead and watch your Jeremiah Johnson." So we got this film about the legendary mountain man, Jeremiah Johnson, starring Robert Redford. And I gave it a shot. Something about it, you know, I, I saw a scene from it online, and I was just like, you know, that looks interesting. And I, I bought this for really cheap, and I liked it. I really enjoyed it. It's, it's very slow. It's not an action uh, western or anything like that. Mostly just a character-driven, story-driven type of film. But the here's the interesting thing about this movie. It turns dark, okay? <laughs> like... <laughs> no spoilers or anything, no spoilers, but it turns like I was surprised like stuff happens later in this movie That I was just kind of like Holy shit. I was not expecting that to happen at all. So it, it turns really dark later. So recommend uh, Jeremiah Johnson Oh 
So, um, so why? Why? Well, another adventures in blind buying, I yeah. guess. Miss Peregrine's home for peculiar children. Oh, we love Ava Green. She's I mean, great. That's, that's about it. That's all I'm. <laughs> that's all I'm gonna watch this for is Ava Green. But that was kind of my mistake in uh, that other Tim Burton film. Dark Shadows. Dear. Yeah. That was that was a mistake. Well, even though the re the reviews on this film were mixed, pretty much the reviews for Dark Shadows were pretty much all. <laughs> Everybody kind of hated Dark Shadows. Oh, and Dark Shadows had potential. Oh, it had so much potential, and that's yeah. what pissed, pissed me off even more about that. So, an another blind buy, another yeah. cheap, I'm glad I bought it for cheap, blind me buy, me <laughs> adventures. Yeah. All right. All right, here we go. The Magnificent Seven Remake uh, Reboot. Oh, boy. Very entertaining Western, uh, but unfortunately very forgettable. Yeah. Very forgettable. I go into a little bit more detail about this in my 2016 uh, Films Quickie Recap video. I'll put a link in the description below. You guys can check that out. But I go into a little bit more detail about this in comparison to the original. Now, I just showed her uh, the original first. She's always seen and loved uh, Seven Samurai. And uh, I showed her the original first. And then I showed her this. Back to back, the yeah. bitch. And, um... Ouch. <laughs> you know, I, it's, 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 it's a conundrum when you can watch a movie that's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. But it's not anything. It's yeah. really not much of anything. It's, it's nice to look at, I suppose, yeah. even though it was filmed a little bit, mm, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, what acting, was your take, though? Was You said it was too modernized or something like that. I felt like it was too glossy. You mm. know, I, I know that the original Mag 7 was filmed in the 60s. And everything looked gritty, and and I mean nothing nothing compares to uh, Leone Western no. when it comes to grit and grime yeah. and ugly faces plastered all over the screen. You gotta <laughs> love it. But you know that was still pretty gritty, as you know, for as much as you you know. Yeah, first time for an American yeah. Western, it was you know there, and uh, this just felt clean, yeah. and it was just it, too clean. It was too clean. The music did not suit, and I, oh god, I love, I love James Horner, you know, he, he departed this world not long after uh, the movie came, I think, um, I think he died before the movie was even released, I don't know if they had to come in with a different composer to finish the score. Um, I love his work, but it did not fit, I didn't feel that it fit with the film at all. Um, Westerns, they need something. Yeah. They need a little something extra, and when you try to modernize it, you try to slick it up, you try to get the young people in, it just doesn't work for me. I mean, it wasn't awful, it just, yeah. I have no reason to ever watch yeah, it Yeah, this again. is more memorable than <laughs> the Magnificent Seven remake. And that had, uh... And this is entertaining, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's entertaining, but, uh, it just, man, it's just, you know, I wanted something different. I wanted this to be our new tombstone. Just fucking badass, oh. R-rated Western, yeah. pulling no punches, and that's not what we got here. That's the problem. You need a pair of balls to give us another tombstone. <laughs> and here's the thing. I was talking about uh, this film with some other people, uh, fans of the original and whatnot, and fans of Anton Fuqua as well, because I like Anton Fuqua as a director. And I was just like, man, we needed another setting. You know, it, maybe it didn't have to be a Western. Maybe it needed to be another setting. Maybe, you know, it needed to be R-rated. It needed to be something different than the same old, same old. I think that's what the problem was. This was the same old, same old. Um, and I was just like, holy shit. Anton Fuqua already made that fucking movie. And it's called Tears of the Sun. <laughs> Which is an awesome, you know, really highly underrated film. So he kind of already made the movie that I wanted. <laughs> but anyway. So, speaking of the original Magnificent Seven. If you want to experience a mindfuck, <laughs> if you want to, if you want a little mindfuck experience, okay, go watch the original Magnificent Seven, starring Yul Brynner and Steve McQueen. Okay, watch that movie, <laughs> and then literally right after, right after that movie, watch this. <laughs> watch this, okay, and the mindfuckery will begin. Yes. Uh, yeah. You want to talk about this? You know, it's fun little. It's very dated. Westworld. It's very quaint, and it's very it's very much a product of its time, and some of it's a little clunky, and and you you know some of the the fat needed to be trimmed out, and maybe focus a little bit more on just the Westworld portion of things, yeah. but oh my God, Yul Brenner is amazing in this film. He he has like a, 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 a five lines maybe if that, and he's just he's amazing. His facial expressions and his his movements, his physical movements. 
Mm -hmm. Fantastic. He was the he he's literally the reason to just keep watching the film over and over. Yeah, it's a slow burn movie. Uh, uh, things don't really pick up until the third act. Right. And like you said, it is, you know, some parts it's, it is a little dated, but there's definitely a lot of charm mm. in this. And you can definitely see how this film influenced James Cameron with The Terminator. You can definitely see the workings here. But yeah, highly, highly enjoyed uh, Westworld. Didn't think I was going to like it as much. <laughs> I thought I was going to be bored out of my mind. And it's actually perfect timing that we've discovered this movie. This is just one of those movies I've always missed on TV and, and you know, I've just always missed it. So watching it for the first time, it's actually perfect timing now because of the Westworld TV series that just came out on HBO. Because we're watching that now, right after this, and we're enjoying that. So, and they had a little, a little, uh... Itty bitty background fuzzy cameo of, of our little gunslinger friend there. Right? Yeah, adorable. so, mm -hmm. So if you're into old school sci-fi, highly recommend Westworld. Oh, goody, so, um, <laughs> what did we do? We we bought the first season of, of Transformers Prime. Mm -hmm. We watched it. Yeah. Watched the second season, started it, never finished never it. Never finished it. Well, we got, what one of these is a movie, and here's season three. Uh, starting with the Beast Hunters, and then I believe this is the finale of the Transformers Prime series, the movie, Predacons Rising, which um, I'm really curious to see where this goes. I am a huge Beast Wars fan. And uh, for those of you who may not know, Beast Wars took place in the late 1990s, that show came out. And it was a precursor, although also a predecessor, to Transformers. It was a precursor that you find out it's a prequel to Transformers, but it's a predecessor in that the Maximals and the Predacons are descendants of the Autobots and the Decepticons. And the show started out very clunky, but it got really good as of second season, and then it got okay and then it went into holy shit territory. Um, but the Predacons Rising, I'm curious where this is gonna go. Mm -hmm. um, we gotta go back and finish season two though. Yeah. Before we can move on. Yeah, I, I, I'm i curious, mm -hmm. you know, we got it, so we have no choice, we have to watch it. <laughs> now, from watching Transformers Prime, um, we enjoyed the animation. Mm -hmm. Some of the action sequences are really cool. It's awesome hearing the, you know, the classic voices. They brought mm -hmm. back uh, Frank Welker to play Megatron. Mm -hmm. You know, and Peter Cullen. Peter Cullen as Optimus Prime. It's just so cool to hear them battling each other. Yeah, and it's it's mostly them we get yeah. to focus on. Yeah, yeah. There, are, there are little kids in it. That's the one negative yeah. on Transformers Prime. Everything else is cool, the animation, the, the action sequences, and the story's fine. Yeah. But the, the little kids in the movie are... I get it. Yeah. Gotta sell it to the kids, I get it. But yeah. sometimes, sometimes the kids are a little annoying. Yeah. That's really our only uh, pet peeve. Well, with the show so it, far. It is a kid's show. What are you going to do? Yeah. Got a lot of blind buys today. <laughs> we might have a lot of blind buy adventure episodes coming up. Yeah. Never seen this. Was always curious about Salem's Lot. Very, very curious about this. It looked interesting, so I had to pick it up. Oh, and uh, how how appropriate. Um, Ghost in the Shell 2, Innocence, the movie that is so far up its ass, it gives the Wachowski brothers a run for their money when it <laughs> comes to philosophical uh, musings and meanderings. Um, so, I first time I saw this was when it was originally released on uh, another company's DVD, and um, I was a little confused. I love the first Ghost in the Shell film, and I was really looking forward to this. And the first time I saw it, I had uh, a lot of confusion abound in my head because it seemed like every other line of dialogue that the character spoke was some kind of philosophical quote from somebody and turns out that's exactly what it was uh, the movie is a little too deep for its own good um, it has a lot of interesting ideas but I think it definitely got too full of itself but oh my god it's absolutely beautiful to look at and as much as I love Yoko Kano in her what she brought to the table in the Ghost in the Shell TV series in, the, in terms of the music in, right? In terms of the music, Kenji Kawai will always be my favorite composer when it comes to Ghost in the Shell. He scored the first film and he scored this and holy shit, if the music <laughs> in this film does not make me want to get up and just like beat the shit out of every drum I could find. Um, now do you recommend this for fans of the first Ghost in the Shell animated movie? Fans of the first Ghost in the Shell, but they've already seen it. They yeah. know they know about it. Um, it's, you know... Is you, it necessary for newbies who have just watched 
the Ghost in the Shell animated movie, do they have to watch this? I would say if you can get it on the cheap, absolutely, because it is in the same world mm -hmm. and it is the same. It's with the same characters, um, and again, it's just it's so nice to look at. Yeah, it's, it's very beautiful. it's very easy to get lost in these two films for me, even though the first one more so than this one. Um, so you still recommend it? I still do recommend it. I got it a little more on the cheap side. I would have liked to have paid a little bit cheaper. Mm -hmm. um, but again, when it looks and sounds this good. Oh. So recently, a psychological thriller slash horror film was just released starring Dane DeHaan called The Cure for Wellness, which we haven't seen yet, and I heard it's a piece of shit. <laughs> I heard it's really bad. I think The Cure for Wellness was trying to be this movie. <laughs> I think it really was. That's what it looked like. That's the vibe I got from the trailer. So, Shutter Island, Martin Scorsese's little dipping his toe into the, the horror genre, the thriller genre right here. And I, I thought it was really good. I thought it was very solid. I, I was very entertained by it. I didn't think I was gonna like it that much, but I got this for like $4. <laughs> oh, I'm scared. I'm a scared! Attack on Titan Part 2. I'm such a chicken shit. I haven't even watched the first part. I really, <laughs> we haven't seen the first one. I really enjoyed the series. Um, has it become too big for its own good? Absolutely. It's everywhere. Uh, it doesn't make the show bad, though. Just right. because something gets popular and mainstream doesn't mean that it's devalued because of that popularity. And, um... I've heard not too many great things about these films, so, um, you know, we'll get there. I think we have to, we're probably going to have to turn our brain off. And we're going to have to marathon the hell out of this. Uh, <laughs> no, none of this, uh, I'm not going to watch the first movie and then yeah. wait, and, you know, I'm, we're just going to do bam, bam, and then mm -hmm. maybe we'll do a review, I don't know. Hopefully it's entertaining. Uh, now, I have seen uh, the remake of this film starring Bridget Fonda, uh, Point of No Return. I've seen that. I was entertained by it for what it was. It wasn't like it was a great movie. But I still found it entertaining. Never got the chance to see the original, La Femme Nikita. I remember coming across the really horribly bad TV series. <laughs> that was inexplicably on for a very long time. <laughs> that show sucked. I was so bored when I tried to watch that show. But for some reason, I always uh, just always ended up missing this every time it would come on TV. So looking forward to checking out the original. <laughs> hey parents, want to scare the shit out of your kids? Show them Return to Oz. <laughs> the, one of the few times, of course, when Disney had balls, it was in the 80s. Um, <laughs> don't, ever, don't ever let your kid watch The Wizard of Oz and then go straight into this and say, yeah. what, it's just another adventure with Dorothy. Oh, no, 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 no. You will be cleaning up little piles of kids' shit the next morning. You will be getting no sex that night because your kids will be sleeping in the bed with you. <laughs> um, I, I absolutely adore this film. I, I didn't get to see it until I was a little bit later on in life, I want to say maybe 10. Um, I grew up on The Wizard of Oz, didn't see this until my cousin showed it to me one day. Yeah, I was about 9 or 10 when I saw it. And I absolutely was baffled because at uh, first I was thinking, wait, the, why is Dorothy younger now than she was in The Wizard of Oz? You know, stupid things that kids think, because you know, you, you know sequels when you're that age, but you, you don't realize, wait a minute, this was 50, 50 years after the original. Of course, they're going to take, you know, they're going to use a kid. You know, Judy Garland was no child when she did The Wizard of Oz. So yeah, they're going to get a kid in here. Beautiful designs. Uh, the wheelers are fantastically horrifying. Mombi, yes. the, the witch with her yes. dozen, dozens and dozens of heads. One of my favorite scenes in this film is when Mombi wakes up because Dorothy's trying to steal the 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 alive powder, and Mombi wakes up and she's all Dorothy Gale, and all of the heads start screaming. Mombi's headless body wakes up in the bed and starts chasing after Dorothy with yeah, that head. That happens in this movie. It's beautiful. The Wizard of Oz movie. I, it happens. You know, you got you got some <laughs> fantastic claymation going on in here with the Gnome King and his palace and. It's just so delightfully horrifying. I, I absolutely adore this film. What sucks about this, though, is that for some reason... Disney doesn't give a shit! Yeah, like, for <sighs> some reason, you can't just, like, go into Best Buy and ask for Return to Oz. You have to either find this on, like, Amazon. I was lucky to get it on Amazon, really. From some sellers. <laughs> or go to eBay. I don't know why this doesn't have an official... You know, everywhere release. Widespread release. Yeah, and it's weird. the picture is just okay. 
Yeah. They never really cleaned up the picture. There's a lot of spottage on it, and it's not, you know, it's not the greatest looking film on Blu-ray, but it's, you know, I've yeah. never had this on uh, any format, so, mm -hmm. yay. I enjoyed the first Red. I thought it was fun. Fun little graphic novel film. I thought it was uh, entertaining. Never got a chance to see the sequel, and I heard uh, it was about the same in terms of uh, entertainment, mm -hmm. just like the first movie. So, be looking forward to watching Red 2. So, uh, you know the one thing we haven't done in a long time? Hmm. Films Revisited. <laughs> you know what would be a great next Films Revisited? Oh, man. This piece of shit. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you know, I, I don't remember praising it too uh. highly, but I, I do think I rated it a little too highly. You know, when you go into a film with zero expectations, as we did with Suicide Squad, um, sometimes you come out feeling a little bit better, and then when you look back on it, you watch it a second time like we did, because we're schmucks. Um, you realize, oh, fuck, we don't fuck this shit up. Yeah. So the, um, the extended cut is a lie. Um, there's maybe five minutes. It didn't feel anything. It didn't feel much longer. Well, actually it did feel, it felt substantially longer than the first time we saw it, but it was not because of the extended cut, which consisted of a small handful of scenes spread throughout the film that yeah, literally all, meant nothing. Yeah, all those extra Joker, Jared Leto scenes that supposedly got cut. Supposedly there was like 90%, 90% of the, of the original yeah, movie worth of Joker sequences. Yeah. Are not on here. There's like one extra scene. <laughs> There's one extra scene with him and Harley Quinn in a flashback sequence, um, in which they saw fit to give the Joker some of the worst dialogue you will hear this side of uh, Dawson's Creek meets <laughs> goth emo. I don't know. I'm an idea. It's, it's not even worth the trip. Um, yeah. Have you have you seen <laughs> screenshots like leak mm. screenshot footage? There's a shot of. Uh, Jared Little as Joker has a little bit of damage right here. He looks freaky. He looks bug-eyed. He's got like a grenade right here. That image was everywhere before uh, Suicide Squad the film was released. Where the fuck is that sequence? Supposedly he shows up at the end finale and tries to fuck up, you know, the, the squad or the Enchantress or he's supposed to do all this shit. None of that was in this yeah. fucking extended version. Yeah, so, so We found the film entertaining for what it was. We pointed out the film's flaws the first time yeah. we reviewed the movie. The flaws hurt more the second yeah, time. Yeah, for some it. reason, watching it again, man, it was it was it was tough it to was get a, through. It was a chore. Yeah. So we don't hate it. It's not like, oh no, we hate the film. It's just no. it's just we just don't like it quite as much yeah. as we did. Unlike the Batman v Superman. Surprisingly, yeah. yeah. The ultimate edition. That movie is still overstuffed and, yeah. and over. Not not perfect, not great. No. But, but it's, it's it's easier to watch. It it's, is easier to it's watch. It's the fastest three hours yeah. that I can think of, mm -hmm. believe it or not. That's probably just me. Next up is a little hidden gem uh, called Little Big Soldier, starring Jackie Chan. Very highly entertaining. Jackie Chan is great in this film. He mostly plays a kind of like a more of a co-starring role than the lead, uh, which I think Jackie Chan should be, you know, at his age now, the guy's a legend, the guy's done everything. He's done every stunt, he's done every fight sequence you can think of. <laughs> he doesn't have to do anymore. He doesn't have to make any more movies, but he, you know, he's doing his thing and still, he's still making films, but I think he shines more now as a co-star. He really shines more and sticks out. And this is a very entertaining movie. Gets a little dark at the end, but there's definitely some funny moments in this. I consider uh, this one of Jackie Chan's best films. And this probably should have been the last movie. He should have went out on this film. I think this should have been his last movie. So, very entertaining. A little Big Soldier. Will it be a movie dojo episode review? I don't know. Uh, sadly, the little movie that just quite couldn't. Uh, Kubo! Kubo and the Two Strings. I still enjoyed the hell out of it. Getting to watch this in the theater, you know, it's it's really nice being able to see something different and imaginative and something that you can see the creator's heart just plastered all over the screen. I know general audiences just didn't give a shit. Um, we really enjoyed it, so yeah, you know, I'd get it. Yeah. Now here was a thriller that I really, really, really enjoyed a little bit too much. I, I, I think I didn't, I didn't expect it to be as good as it was. Very, very good thriller. Maybe a little bit too long, but still very good. Cinematography looks great. Very powerful performances from our lead actors, especially Mr. Hugh Jackman. 
I mean, I don't know what, but was this dude going for best best actor in this movie? But he was just phenomenal in this film, and that is Prisoners. Prisoners, very very entertaining thriller, very sad. This is not a this is not a happy a family picture. Yeah, it's not a family picture at all. But basically, Hugh Jackman's daughter and her friend go missing, and so the parents uh, to kind of team up with Jake Gyllenhaal to investigate uh, their whereabouts and try to find them. Very good. Highly recommend Prisoners. And next up is the movie that inspired the shitty maze at Universal Horror Nights. It's Krampus! <laughs> we did a review on that one. Yeah, we did a review. It's it's entertaining. Very, I think, very I think, entertaining. I think it looks better than I liked it. Yeah. Um, I didn't hate it. I no. actually did enjoy it. Um, yeah. I would have preferred it to go a little more wackadoo, a little more violent. They kind of copped out at the end without completely copping out at the end. Yeah, this, but this it's thing, still... it, need, it needed to be R. Yeah, <laughs> visually, visually though, it's a good looking film. Yeah, now we got another dad movie here. <laughs> My dad used to watch this movie all of the time, and I actually got a kick out of it when I was young. I actually used to sit down and watch it with him. And it finally was released on Blu-ray by Shout Factory in its collector's edition. Starring Sylvester Stallone and Billy Dee Williams, both playing police officers, going after the terrorists that is brilliantly played by the legendary Rudger Hauer. That's right. I give you Nighthawks. Nighthawks. And this is Rudger Hauer's American film debut, by the way. He kills it. He steals the show. It's funny seeing Stallone beard <laughs> running around the whole movie with, with uh, Lando Calrissian. But uh, a lot of fun, old school, a little dated, but definitely a good police thriller. But it's this, it's it's all about Rudger Hauer in this movie. He, he steals the show. Now, speaking of Rudger, <laughs> this movie, man, what the fuck? Blind Fury, Blind Fury, released by Cinema Cult Blu-ray. This was so unexpectedly entertaining, <laughs> very entertaining. Basically, he kind of basically he plays. A Zatoichi, the blind swordsman type of character. And it's a comedy. <laughs> it's a comedy. It's not a super boing, oh, but blind guy can kick everybody's ass. It's not it's not that slapstick. It's more of a dark comedy, but it does have some blatant comedic moments in here. But the action sequence is surprisingly very well done for Rudger Hauer basically playing Zatoichi and for martial arts movie fans out there. They got a fucking show Kasuki bonus. Yeah. They gotta bring in this, you know, assassin to take out, you know, Rudger. And Show Kasugi shows up and fights him at the end, and I was like, mind blown. And yeah, action sequences surprisingly good. Not bad. So for a fun little action comedy, martial arts comedy, I recommend Blind Fury. Now on to the movie that spiked the uh, purchase of drama means so people could actually survive the film Hardcore Henry, Woo aka uh, first person shooter game gone right. Um, <laughs> the best video game movie. That wasn't as, that wasn't an actual video game. Yeah. You know, um, we haven't watched it yet since we bought it on Blu-ray, but damn, I just remember having a lot of fun with this. Oh yeah. You want to turn? Your, just turn your brain off. Mm -hmm. It doesn't hurt. All right. So I don't care what anybody says. I don't care about the haters, okay? Is this show perfect? No. Does this show have flaws in it? Yes, like all TV shows. Like all media. But is it one of the greatest TV shows in existence? Yes, <laughs> there's nothing like this, okay? And I don't care, I don't care. Everyone's expecting me to pull up some Walking Dead. Oh, <laughs> Walking no, Dead Blu-ray season. Ouch. I don't care. Dun, 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 dun. Game of Thrones, the sixth season. This show is amazing. I don't care what anybody says, man. <laughs> it's a perfect no. There's flaws, yes. But it is amazing. This is not even a show. I consider this an event. Okay, when this is on TV, the show is an event. Okay? Yeah. So, highly recommend. If you like drama, if you like fantasy, if you like action, it's got everything in it, damn it. Incest. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh god, some boobies. <laughs> a lot of boobs, a lot of other things. Uh, flipping and wagging around. Wow. <laughs> flipping and wagging around. Flipping and wagging around, yeah. <laughs> 
Anyway, probably the best special effects, CGI effects, on uh, for a TV series. So highly recommend Game of Thrones. Do not jump into oh. this. You can't. <laughs> no. Okay. You have to watch it from season one up. Yeah. Okay. And you may not even like season one that much. You might be like, well, this is okay. I don't see what the big deal is. Stick with it. Okay. Stick with it. Yeah. It, it's definitely a show that. You know, the more the more you give it time, mm -hmm. the more the characters develop. And stay away from spoilers. What characters develop? What? Yeah. And that's that's the trick. You've seen a a, a a progression, a true progression of just about every single character that we come into contact with that is still alive. Because you know. yeah, but uh, a lot of death. <laughs> Yeah. Don't, don't have a favorite character. It's not worth it. We, I'm going to take this opportunity right now. <laughs> really quick. I'm sorry. It's all right. All right. When did everybody become pussies? I'm sorry. You can get mad at me in the comments if you want. But everyone has completely ditched Walking Dead now because of the Negan episode. Okay? The Negan episode. Huh. The show has been violent since day one. <laughs> okay? It's always been violent. This, it was, oh, but it's, it's, it's gone too far because, you know, you got a human torturing and killing another human. It's gone too far. I'm done with this show. Blah, 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 blah. Did, he, did everyone out there forget about Herschel, the character of Herschel? Sorry, spoilers. The way he died by the governor decapitating his head and, oh, the sword didn't go all the way through. So I'm going to keep decapitating his head right in front of his family. Did everybody forget that that happened on the TV show? But uh, apparently the Negan episode. Everyone's like, oh god, I can't take this show anymore. What do you, the show's been violent from day one. And the only reason I'm bringing this up is, you know, I get the chance to rant about it, because we didn't get a chance to do a video. But the only reason I'm bringing it up is because that's a normal episode for Game of Thrones. Okay? <laughs> what Negan did <laughs> to those characters is Tuesday yeah, on Game of Thrones. It's Tuesday. <laughs> so stop being pussies out there. Jesus Christ. Sorry. Oh, God. Um, so apparently everyone hates this movie. The Conjuring 2. I don't know why. Um, I, I I don't know if I, I enjoyed it. I was entertaining. I don't think I enjoyed it as much as you did, but what yeah. I do admit, and I do freely uh, say about this film, it's very, very well made. Yeah. Um, there, are, there was one or two ludicrous moments that I was laughing at. Fire truck! <laughs> Which I, I laughed out loud in the theater. It was stupid. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that's... It's it's still well made, you know. You don't get a lot of well made horror films, especially yeah. now. They're so cheap, you know. The Bye Bye Man, for fuck's yeah. sake, you just get so much shit that, you know, when you get something like this that's actually trying and people still shit on it, it's kind of sad. Yeah. So you know, I had to pick up some Furious Seven. Yeah. I'm a little late buying this, I know, but I had to pick it up. Very entertaining. The urban superhero team <laughs> adventures continues. Highly looking forward to the eighth film in the franchise that comes out this year but I do believe at some point I think they need to end it I think they need to end it uh, this is definitely one of those series where it was dead and it, it just was finished and then it, it made this ridiculous humongous comeback and became one of the biggest franchises in recent years which is just like mind-blowing for what it is even though all of these movies are pretty much big dumb fun but yeah enjoy it for yourself another movie we got to see in the theater Yay. a nice dark comedy the nice guys Ooh. directed by shane so help me god you better save predator black <laughs> uh, yeah man he's promised us to rated our predator because pg-13 is for pussies yes actual quote thank you mr black um this was this was a lot of fun to watch a lot of fun unfortunately it didn't do well in the theater of course not because it was good <laughs> like share subscribe like, share, subscribe.